Hola, today we're going into AODC, which is where all the Phonak hearing aids are put together and also where the custom molds are made. Today we're meeting with Scott, who's going to tell us all about the different hearing aids available on the market and how they can benefit different people in this second episode. Hi Finn, I'm Scott Wood. I head up the product management team here at Phonak US. Great to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So today I have a few questions for you about hearing aids and how exactly they work. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. Love to hear them. So what exactly you know, is a hearing aid to the people that may not know and how do they differ from different models? Oh, great question. Let's start with the simple, what is a hearing aid, right? I mean, a hearing aid is an acoustic amplification device, right? It takes acoustic signals, uh, converts them, and most new hearing aids convert them to a digital signal that gets processed and then sent back out acoustically into the ear canal, right? And it's just really meant for, for folks who need a little bit of help or sometimes a lot of help <laughs> hearing just to, to hear sounds, their environment, especially spoken words better in, in whatever environment they happen to be in. So what are the differences? You mentioned different models. So how oh, are those? yeah. Yeah, okay, so what kind of different models of hearing yeah. aids do we have? That's a great question. You know, I'm gonna go back to maybe not the most popular type of hearing aid, but hearing aids that were really popular, if I if we go 25 years ago, were custom hearing aids. It's a hearing aid like this. So that's a custom full shell hearing aid, and that would fit completely, uh, it goes down in someone's ear canal, but it completely fills up their concha, right? And yeah. Yep, uh, looks a little bit bigger, right? But you know, all the electronics fit in here. In fact, there is a cool example. Here you go. I mean, that's probably hard to see, but if you can oh, see, yeah, there's awesome. one with an open shell. So um, this won't bec become another hearing aid. This was something <laughs> that we came in that came in, and we uh, we kind of fixed and and replaced some parts. So there's a just a nice example. But this is the larger size. But we actually have some. Like this, I mean, a little, you exactly. call those. That's like a modern mold, but a whole, whole hearing aid inside of it now. Whole hearing aid, all those electronics are down in there. Um, and you know, that can fit deep down in the ear canal and people would hardly ever see that, right? So what's the big difference between these and like say, the Marvels which are behind the ears? So uh, the Marvels that we have now, the Marvel product that we have now is uh, the Audeo M, which is the Rick device, yeah. right? Here, I'll show you a sample. This, is, this isn't the Marvel, but that's yes. a, another example of a Rick type device. So right where this piece um, is behind the ear. So the difference there is really the electronics packages are a little bit different. In a, in a RIC or a BTE type product, those electronics are kind of predefined. So they are, um, you know, they're kind of mass produced in some ways where yeah. all the electronics are in one package and it fits inside of this shell, right? So they all fit in the same size shell. What's interesting about when you get to custom products, right? Not every ear is the same. Exactly. Um, so, you know, and depending on the size that someone might want. So that a lot electronics package is a little bit looser. We actually have to custom design those, kind of figure out how those components are going to fit in that ear. Maybe someone has a very narrow ear canal or, um, you know, a tight bend in their ear canal. Yep. You know, then you know those electronics aren't going to fit exactly the same and you have to kind of figure out how to kind of slot the, the different pieces in there. So, you know, it's, it's a lot more customization when we're talking about custom products. Indeed, you can you have the behind the ear part and then this can be totally custom. That can also be custom, you're right. Yeah. So so um, quite often with a with a RIC device, you know, the, the wired part here that goes to the receiver, right, or the speaker will just go into a dome or something, right? A yep. standard size dome that a lot of people wear. Um, but in this case, this one actually has a, a custom slim tip. Okay. So, um, you know, this little slim tip, it's just an earpiece, right, that is custom for one individual ear so it can fit down in there. And quite often that gives you a better seal in there, sometimes more Absolutely. comfortable, um, maybe allows you to get a little more gain out of that device because yeah. of the, the better seal that you have. So this is a product that's actually a power BTE, right, a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. So this is um, meant for a lot more power going to the ear? Absolutely. The more right? severe loss? So someone who might have a more yeah, severe loss would, would definitely need to, something with a little more power. Um, and so th this is an example of one of those. And usually then that, that's an acoustic signal then uh, coming out of here where you see the ear hook uh, and then you would attach it here. I won't attach it now, but they attach it to an ear mold like this mm -hmm. that could then go in the ear, so through this tube. So it would be, you know, it comes in through the microphone, gets processed, comes out acoustically through the ear, uh, the ear hook, through the ear tube and into the ear mold. So I'm guessing there's the a drawback to having just the sound travel like that? Is yeah, there a you benefit know, to having an in-ear receiver compared to just a tube like that? Yeah, I mean, a great question, and a lot of audiologists would tell you just, just by having the receiver down closer, you know, you have less volume than in your Absolutely. ear between where the sound is coming out and where the eardrum is, and right, I mean, obviously, I think with w driving with less power, you can get a better signal yeah. to the ear and, you know, for better for, uh, for someone with a, with a hearing loss, 
not to have to you know, kind of lose a little if you're going through the entire acoustic path. So I mean, it's a it's a yeah. good thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and that's it. part of the reason Ricks are so popular. When you look at, it's kind of going back now in time, right? When, <laughs> when I started, um, when I started in hearing aids 25 or so years ago, customs were really popular, okay. and BTs were, were the alternative. Um, then when the receiver and the canal devices, the Ricks came about, they just kind of started taking over. So okay. now, probably, you know, you look in the U.S. I think all of the the Statistics show that about 70% of the hearing aids dispensed in the U.S. are those receiver and the canal devices. So they are by far the most popular devices out there. Do you think that would like a manufacturer shift or that more like a people, that's what they wanted, would rather be behind the ear? I think the manufacturers didn't necessarily push those devices, right? I yeah. think it was, you know, audiologists, fitters that were out there found that, that their patients were more satisfied and happier. You know, people yeah. were happy with, with the receiver and the canal. And, and with RIC devices, you know, you have to have the right patient too, right? For you, Rick's easy, yeah, right? Yep. I mean, you got great dexterity, right? Exactly. Your hand, you throw it on your hands are there. good. You throw it. Yeah, you you got it all. But someone, you know, so, you might have someone who, um, either they might have bad arthritis yep. or dexterity issues, or maybe just you know every day they don't quite understand. You know how I have to put this over my ear and then try to you know fit the other part in the <laughs> yeah. ear, right? I mean, you know, and so they might fumble around with it. So the Rick might not be the best choice for someone like that. So that's why a, a, you know, a BTE might be a little simpler, so an ear mold that just fits snugly you know, within that full, full concha of the ear. Absolutely. Uh, might, you know, and it's a little bigger, easier to handle. It might be better for some of those patients, right? Exactly. And then some people still just like custom hearing aids too. Yeah. I mean, a lot of those are people that have been wearing them for a long time, so we still build the custom hearing aids, even the full shells. The canal custom, which just kind of fits in the ear canal, sticks out a little bit. Um, is popular. You can still put a lot of technology in those Absolutely. in that size device. You know, if you're looking for rechargeable hearing aids, especially you know with our Phonak or Sonova products, it's yeah. Um, you know, the Rick device is definitely on top. We do have BTS that are rechargeable. Even our pediatric portfolio has rechargeable hearing aids, and a lot of the manufacturers have similar things right now too. But rechargeable has really been popular with the Rick devices in the industry, and Absolutely. so. Um, as rechargeability, you know, continues to grow and Rick popularity grows, we see that becoming yeah. the most popular style. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's great talking to you. Great talking to you. Yes.